good evening friends hope all of you are doing well today entire world is suffering from the effect of corona or covid 19 and we are we anesthetists are involved in the management of corona patients in the operation theaters in the icus i am going to talk about covid 19 patient and regional anesthesia especially because this is very important especially for uh, freelancing anesthetists and also for uh, anesthetists who are working in uh, uh, big hospitals because regional anesthesia is a safer as option as compared to general anesthesia in this patients so we will discuss about uh, spinal anesthesia epidural anesthesia and peripheral nerve blocks how to give it and what precaution should be taken before giving regional anesthesia in this patients Uh, i have prepared this presentation uh, from this guideline there is covid 19 guidance for regional anesthesia neuroxal and peripheral nerve blocks this is by esra and esra society uh, so i am thankful to them uh, for publishing this this guideline and uh, i have taken most of the things from this guideline only so as i said anesthesiologists are at highest risk of uh covid in 19 infection because we are dealing with airway we are dealing uh, with patients in very close communication uh, so we are at highest risk ga with airway management is a potential source of aerosol generation because when you give ga either you when you do intubation or extubation uh, patient uh, will have high generation of aerosol and you are very close to the patient and there are all chances of uh, infection if you don't take proper precaution and uh, there is different uh, guidelines and different sources for this how to give ga in this patients airway management increases the risk of infection to healthcare profession up to 6.6 times so if you are managing the airway you are 6.6 times Uh, in, uh, increase risk uh, of uh, getting covid infection uh, if you are treating the patient of a covid so are is considered safer so how to prepare and plan when we are giving regional anesthesia or neuroxal anesthesia there are mainly three types of patients covid 19 negative patient i doubt nowadays any patient can be positive patient a patient might be asymptomatic you don't take care and you get infection from the patient covid 19 positive patients and suspected or patient under investigation so if we talk about covid 19 uh, negative patient as i said we should follow institution guideline regular institution guideline if it is a confirmed negative patient but once community spread starts all cases must be presumed to be covid 19 positive so uh, consider all the patient as a covid 19 positive and treat accordingly so what will you do covid 19 po in positive patient or uh, patient under investigation uh, usually ra is not considered aerosol generating procedure there are less chances of aerosol generation unless patient coughs or sneezes but we have to take regular contact and droplet precaution like we have to use surgical mask eye protection with goggles or with uh, uh, glass shield surgical gown and double gloves should be used the use of n95 mask or similar uh, powered air purifying respirator is not generally needed but may be considered for prolonged close contact with positive patient in a close setting this is the guideline but i personally believe we should use n95 mask in all the patient and we should take all possible precaution in all the patient regarding whether patient is positive whether surgery is prolonged or contact is more we should take all because we don't know when surgery will be prolonged or when we need to manage the airway so we don't know about it sometimes we have to suddenly we have to manage the airway and if you are not properly prepared uh, then you are at increase this so always use uh, uh, all possible uh, pp uh, while doing the procedure all patient should wear a surgical mask to restrict the droplet spread always ask the patient to wear the mask during the procedure sometime patient will say that i am not comfortable with uh, this mask but it sh it should be 
uh, instructed to patients that uh, you, you will have to wear the surgical mask all the time during surgery. Avoid high flow oxygen using nasal prong. If you are using nasal prong oxygen, there are there will be generation of the droplets and it will spread in that atmosphere. Uh, so he, we have to avoid nasal prong and high flow oxygen. If the patient needs supplemented oxygen, use oxygen mask with lower flows. The flow of supplemented oxygen should be kept to the minimum as possible. The surgical mask can be used to cover the oxygen mask to limit the displacement percent of the droplets. So when you apply uh, uh, oxygen mask, always cover it with the surgical mask to prevent the spread of the droplets. The regional uh, uh, anesthesia procedure should be performed in the operating room and not in the block room. This is very important because in the block room or in the area where you perform blocks, sometimes there are other patients and you will expose those patients to this uh, uh, positive patient and uh, there are chances of the spread of infection. So always take the patient inside the OT, don't use block room and give the block or regional anesthesia there only. The most experienced person should perform the regional anesthesia. This is very important because you don't want to take any chances. You want the effect 100%. Suppose you are doing a surgery under a block like a uh, radius fixation or humerus fixation and if you are allowing your resident to give block and block doesn't act and you, you have to convert the it into GA. So it is not a desirable thing, especially in the um, era of the COVID-19 infection. So always ask the experienced person to perform the regional anesthesia. The dunning and uh, uh, or personal protection equipment should occur before entering the room. So always wear all PPE before entering into the procedure room. Equipment. Bringing a cart or trolley with drugs and equipment to the procedure room should be discouraged. Don't bring all the drugs and trolleys with drugs inside the operator, operation theater. It, you, you will take this to the OT, patient will generate the aeros some aerosol and it will go on their trolley and it will spread to other patients. So don't allow it. The required equipment and drugs should be prepared and packed inside plastic bag before the procedure. So uh, only take the required drug inside the operation theater and pack, it should be packed in the plastic bag. The ultrasound equipment including ultrasound transducer should be protected from contamination using plastic cover. So uh, cover the probe with plastic whatever you, you are using like uh, cling wrap or uh, uh, camera cover or whatever you are using. Always drop the probe, always cover the ultrasound machine with the uh, sterile plastic drapes so that uh, aerosol transmission can be reduced and always minimize number of person inside the procedure room. Always keep adequate staff like uh, sometimes you need assistance so keep adequate staff but uh, don't uh, allow more person than required. So what will you do when you are doing spinal and epidural? First thing you need to do is rule out thrombocytopenia. There are reports, there are studies where they have shown that in patient with uh, corona there is thrombocytopenia. So always rule out thrombocytopenia first because if uh, platelet count below 75,000 then look for the risk benefit ratio and don't then only go for spinal or epidural. Use routine sepsis. All routine sepsis should be practiced. Uh, there is a study where they said that uh, coronavirus uh, uh, life uh, la, uh, uh, stays on the plastic drips more as compared to paper drips. So uh, if you have paper drips then use it as compared to plastic drips. Don't allow CSF to drip freely through the spinal needle because there are studies where they found coronavirus in CSF also. So if you allow the CSF to drop on the operation theater table or uh, on the drips, there are chances of coronavirus spread. Use adequate dose to prevent conversion to GA. Suppose if you have given smaller dosages or you have used a short acting drug and surgery lasts longer, then you will have to convert it, it into GA. So choose the drug, uh, drug wisely so that your uh, surgery can be finished under the uh, spinal anesthesia or epidural anesthesia. Uh, there is no specific dose adjustment uh, recommended uh, for uh, this positive cases. 
for continuous epidural adjust dose to minimize requirement of top up dosages because if your staff goes for the top up dosages uh, uh, he or she will be in the uh, close contact of the patient and there are chances of spread of the uh, corona to the healthcare professional who is uh, going to give the this uh, top up dosages so adjust the uh, epidural so that you require minimum top up dosage Repeat of excessive hypertension are there with COVID positive. When you are giving spinal anesthesia and COVID positive patient, there are, there are some reports of excessive hypertension. So be prepared uh, with uh, vasopressors if required. Use negative pressure room if possible. If your hospital uh, has a negative pressure operation theater, then use it because positive pr uh, pr pressure inside the OT will spread the vi uh, virus in all corridors and other OTs also. Dispose all material properly after completing the procedure because uh, there are chances of spread with uh, all these uh, spinal needles or epidural needles or traps. Charting should be done outside procedure room. Don't do it inside. Uh, no need to do it inside OT because if you take these charts and uh, uh, if you are doing uh, web charting uh, laptops or computers inside the OT, uh, there are more chances of droplets on those things and uh, it can spread the corona. So it should be done outside procedure room after the procedure or some, you can ask uh, someone to do charting from outside of the operation theater. What if patient develop PDPH after spinal or epidural? We have to use conservative measures. There are not a big study, but uh, th this must be the guidelines. Uh, we have to go for conservative measures first. Avoid nasal spinopelate and uh, recently there are reports that uh, nasal spinopelate and ganglion block work well in PDPH, but don't use it because uh, chances of droplet spread and close contact are more with uh, nasal spinopelate and ganglion block so avoid it avoid blood patch if possible try conservative measures first because we don't know in positive patients uh, we uh, we, uh, we collect the blood from the patient and we are injecting the drug in the epidural spread what will happen if it goes into cns we don't know what is the prob actual problem so we have to avoid it uh, as far as possible especially in the patient with um, uh, covid status status we can do it uh, after patient becomes negative but avoid uh, as far as possible peripheral now blocks choose your block to minimize respiratory complications suppose if you are giving upper limb block uh, avoid interscalary block wherever possible avoid uh, uh, supraclavicular because phrenic nerve palsy is more with both this block and with supraclavicular block sometimes you can precipitate pneumothorax so uh, this block should be avoided whenever possible and uh, it should be replaced by other blocks use ultrasound if possible because with the use of ultrasound you will uh, you can reduce the dosages you can prevent the phrenic nerve palsy you can prevent the pneumothorax uh, you, uh, when you are using reducing the dosages uh, there are less chances of last where you require intubation so it should be avoided Avoid pre-procedural sedation because sometimes with sedation patient will have respiratory depression and you will need to um, handle the airway if patient develops severe dep respiratory depression. Use additive wisely to, to prevent immunocompression and sedation. Suppose if you are using dexamethasone, it can cause some immunodepression uh, 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 and uh, with uh, drugs like clonidine sometimes patient will have sedation and uh, it will hamper the respiratory status. Catheter should be used after looking at risk benefit ratio because when you are putting the catheter you have to ask the uh, um, uh, paramedic staff like nurses to give top, uh, give top ups or changes seating so more patient contact but when you are using the catheters uh, you will require less opioids which is respiratory depression so risk benefit ratio should be checked and uh, use catheter accordingly don't use facial block uh, facial plane block which require reposition of the patient after suppose a patient is for laparotomy and um, you want to give uh, blocks after gf 
so give tap block or rectal sheet block where you don't require reposition position in of the patient avoid blocks like uh, erector spiny block or thoracic paravertebral block or um, coldatus lumborum block where you require to reposition the patient because when you reposition the patient there are chances of dislodgement of the uh, endotracheal tube uh, with uh, with the circuit and there are chances of aerosol spread so in such cases uh, use blocks like tap block or rectal sheet block rather than using the uh, blocks which require lateral position avoid last use the dose uh, calculate the dose properly to avoid the local anesthetic systemic toxicity uh, because if at all last occurs uh, you will require resuscitation you will require intubation uh, and uh, you, you, there, there are more chances of uh, infection to healthcare professional when you are doing intubation or resuscitation. So, uh, calculate the dose properly, use ultrasound and prevent the last. Avoid block if you can achieve analgesia with systemic and suppose if you have given GN, if you want to supplement the block uh, to provide analgesia, then look at the risk benefit ratio whether uh, if you can manage the pain with systemic agents, avoid the blocks. Monitoring and conduct. Test block success before proceeding for surgery. This is very important. Check whether your block is working or not, spinal is working or not, epidural is working or not. It give enough time before asking the surgeon uh, to go ahead because sometimes with blocks like cytic block you will require more time. Um, so give a decade time for a complete block then only proceed for the surgery. Excessive or deep sedation should be avoided because it can lead to respiratory depression and you will require intubation. If you need to convert to GA, take all necessary precaution before intubation, use all PPEs, you, you uh, take all precaution to uh, pre prevent uh, COVID spread to yourself. Patient should wear surgical mask all throughout the procedure if uh, surgery is going under spinal or epidural or block. So ask the patient to wear the surgical mask all throughout the procedure. When you end the case, patient should be monitored in the operating room until safe and uh, before transfer to COVID-19 design area to the hospital as per local guidelines. So don't ship the patient to the recovery area, directly ship the patient to the COVID-19 designated area till that monitor the patient inside operation theater only. It has been shown that the risk of transmission is highest during the doping and uh, uh, doping of personal protective equipment. So when you are removing the personal protective equipment, uh, if you don't take proper precaution, there are high chances of infection. So extra time should be allowed for uh, while wearing and removing the uh, PPE. The presence of an observer uh, is recommended uh, when you are uh, doing all this. Simulation sessions should be conducted for training staff uh, uh, for wearing and removing the PPE. Any reusable equipment utilized during the procedure should be disinfected as per institution guideline and then only use. So this is the guideline for regional anesthesia and uh, COVID patient. If we summarize the guidelines, uh, don't appropriate PP before doing procedure, take extra time to drop and use an observer. RA procedure are not considered aerosol generating. The use of N95 mask or similar mask are, is not considered necessary, but I will say always use it. The use of N95 mask should be considered for surgical procedure with a significant risk of conversion to GM. All patients should wear a surgical mask to restrict the droplet spread. Ensure the use of plastic covers to protect ultrasound equipment. Choose the right procedure. The use of RA is not contraindicated for COVID-19 patients. RA is prepared for providing anesthesia care whenever possible. Prepare and pack the required drug in a plastic bag. Don't take all the drug inside OT. Use block that re reduce the respiratory interference such as axillary or infraclavicular block as compared to interscalene and supra. A risk benefit should be considered for perineural adjuvant and continuous perineural catheters. Currently, no dose adjustment for RA is recommended. 
use ultrasound guidance whenever possible. RA should be thoroughly tested before proceeding with surgery to minimize the need for conversion to GA. Use minimal supplemental oxygen. Rule out thrombocytopenia before neurexial procedure. Watch and be prepared for hypotension upper after neurexial anesthesia. Postpone epidural birth patch if possible until recovery from acute infection. So these are the this is the summary of the guidelines which I have discussed. And this is last but very important when you go to home after completing your operation theater duty take shoes off before entering the home spray alcohol tap and bottom uh, tap, uh, alcohol at the top of, uh, and bottom of the shoes also due to clothes cell phone glasses keys work utensils and computers etc throw away any receipt or papers go to where you can take your clothes off and put them in the washer immediately with hot water don't touch or sit in any chairs or bed go to the bathroom directly to take a shower with soap brush your teeth properly so clean yourself up before you exposing to your dear ones like your kids or parents then only you can hug your family so take care of yourself take your care of your family take care of your kids take care of your parents take care of your spouse and uh, do the duty uh, which is uh, which you are doing it for society so your uh, safety is as important as of patient thank you namaste